Hey everybody, tonight I want to do a little video called Don't Put God in a Box. And uh, this is one of the first things that I told my pastor uh, that I had um, in the church that before I got married, or right after I got married rather, um, that you can't put God in the box or he won't be able to show you anything. And uh, he kind of weaved and ducked and hemmed and hauled and like I said before, they taught him in a seminary when a parishioner comes to share something with you, duck. And so this is uh this video I'm making tonight is a little long these lines and something that I've been discovering with my Lord. Uh, I have noticed if you try to put God in a denominational box, if you try to apply the letter of the law, scriptural understanding. Uh, to gain the knowledge of being godly, well, quite frankly, it just doesn't work because you become a Pharisee is really what happens. Now, don't get me wrong. The Bible says to study to show yourself approved. Yes, but study prayerfully. Study with, study with the Holy Spirit's leading. Uh, once you start applying the letter of the law or religiosity, systematic theologies to the Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit within you, it automatically kills the leading uh, that the Spirit um, shows you on the inside. And this is what I want to do this little video about tonight. <clears throat> now there's uh, two things that people don't take into consideration uh, in, the, uh, in the church the clergy and the laity lie, and they really are, because there's no place in the scriptures that talks about clergy and laity. You're either a child of God, born again, washed in the blood of Christ, or you're not. You can either hear him or you cannot. And this was this is something that I've I've come to the realization in my understanding of is the more that I try to uh, indoctrinate, uh, <laughs> you know, play on the word doctrines, the more that it actually kills the leading of the Holy Spirit within me. And I never really understood this except to say that this is because the Christian life, a true Christian life with the power of Christ is indeed spiritual. And what men fail to realize is that Satan's out there and he counterfeits the things of God continually. Satan watches God's people and uh, mimics and counterfeits the leadings of the Holy Spirit to confuse uh, uh, other uh, potential brethren that are uh, trying to uh, walk in a deeper truth of understanding. And it was very interesting because I was watching one of uh, Brother Justin's tapes today, and he talked about, he mentioned the Azuzu Street Revival, which happened out in San Francisco, California, I believe it was. And it started in April of 1906 and went to about 1915. And the Pentecostal movement came out of that, and or the, or the apostolic uh, movement was actually printed on the, on the side of the uh, building, started because of this. But... Again, here were men trying to, to use a phrase that I always use, put God in a box. And you can't box the Holy Spirit in. It has to be an individually um, listened to and inspired message from the Almighty. And one, you, can't, uh, you can't do a retread on it. You, it's either the living Word of God or it's not. And this is people, people uh, don't take into account God's spirit, and they don't take into account demonic spirits oftentimes when they play church, uh, so to speak. And I wanted to read this uh, the day to you that I found uh, under uh, Charles Fox Perham, who was the man who uh, raised up um, William J. Seymour, uh, Two Street Revival, in other words, I guess he kind of mentored uh, Reverend some more. It says, Charles Fox Perham. June 1873 to 
29th January 1929, was an American preacher and evangelist. Together with William J. Seymour, Parham was one of the two central figures in development of early spread of Pentecostalism. It was Parham that associated uh, glossolia, which is uh, translated speaking in tongues, with the baptism in the Holy Spirit, a theological connection crucial to the emergence of Pentecostalism as a distinct movement. Now, this is what I thought was very interesting here. It says, early ministry. Perham began conducting his first religious, religious services at the age of 15 years old. I'm sure the man was born again. In 1891, he enrolled at Southwestern College in Winsfield, Kansas, a Methodist-affiliated school. He attended until 1893 when he came to believe education would prevent him from ministering effectively. Now, that's the thing that first jumps off the page to me. He's putting God in a edge because surely you don't think. Let's learn. Let's learn our theology. Let's, you know. Um, and it's funny because even the in the Mennonite communities, they believe that education makes a body proud. And so this man right here uh, is expressing something that I've come to realize that has killed me in my Christian life is um, uh, the education, the theologians and all, uh, they get so much into the mind instead of following the spirit of Christ within them that they get sidetracked and probably not knowingly because this is a trap that Satan uses. So uh, that's pretty interesting because here we are in the 21st century and I'm reading the same convictions a man had in 1893. And then it goes on to say, he then worked for the Methodist Episcopal Church, Church excuse me, North as a supply pastor. I'm not sure what that was, but it says he was never ordained. Interesting. He didn't get into the clergy, as it were. Parham left the Methodist Church in 1895 because he disagreed with its hierarchy. Okay? He also complained that Methodist preachers were not left to preach by direct inspiration. They were not led to preach by direct inspiration. In other words, following the Holy Spirit within you, hearing his voice and preaching uh, the word as God gives you the words to say to others. That's direct inspirational, I believe. Now it says, rejecting denominations, he establishes his own uh, internant evangelical ministry, which preached the ideas of the holiness movement as well as received, was well received by the people of Kansas. So that's a little clip that I wanted to read tonight, but I wanted to show, in contrast, uh, how these things are, are still effective today. Now, as far as the speaking in tongues and tongues and baptism of the Holy Spirit, which we're familiar with in Pentecostalism because of this man, uh, that is a gifting of the Holy Spirit, and it is not necessary for salvation. However, uh, we should, if God wants to enable us with giftings as he leads, we should be open and willing to receive it. But what I see here is Satan getting in and creating a trap that if you don't have this gifting, then you're not born again. You're not, you know, you haven't received the Holy Spirit because this is what this man experienced in his personal walk with Jesus Christ. Uh, and uh, I'm sure a lot of the other uh, followers after him, but 
again, he's fallen in the Satan's trap already, and I have great respect for this brother because obviously knew the Lord, he knew how to follow the Lord, but there were trips and snares for him. And what came out of this this uh, structuring that he was trying to avoid was he was trying to avoid another structuring. And this is what Satan does. He tries to create a formula, if you will, a systematic theology in following the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you that if you walk with the Lord in spirit, there's no formula, there's no system. You can't put God in a box. You have to simply listen and move towards how he leads you to move. And of course, it will all be uh, in strict adherence with what happened in the scriptures because the Bible will not ever uh, conflict with itself or the biblical principles will not ever conflict. Um, but uh, again, I see it's just like in, in the beginning when, when Christ came, you had the the intellectual, the theologians, the Pharisees, the scribes trying to um, intellectually understand God and create laws and formulas for following the Lord, like I mentioned Methodism in an earlier video that I did. But in fact, it is a very interpersonal thing. And once you apply a structure to it, try to put him in a building or a box, I dare say that... Uh, you know, it's, it's, when you're not following Christ in spirit, that's when the spirit's not going to speak to you because you have to follow him in spirit. And Satan doesn't want people realizing this. Satan doesn't want people to, uh, have their own spiritual, uh, relationship with the Lord. But Jesus Christ said, you know, uh, that if you don't hate your mother, father, sister, and brother, you cannot be my disciple. In contrast, to follow on him. In other words, you love him so much that everything pales in comparison. And this is what I've said in some of my other videos. And this one's no different. But I just thought it was extraordinary that here was a man back in 18, born in 1893, that uh, Uida, the same spiritual truth, a knowing of the same spiritual truths that uh, I experienced and a lot of us experience a day that are truly the Lord's. And you see, it just goes to show that there is a counterfeit to knowing and following Jesus Christ. And so we have to be very careful that our hearts are hard after him alone and not some systematic theology in replacing him in our lives. So God bless you, friends. And I hope this made some sense to people. Uh, it was a revelation to me that, um, hey, guess what? Uh, the other brethren all through the centuries have struggled with these same things that I struggle with today. And I'm sure many others are out there. So, be of good hope. He is stronger in us than he that is of the world. But we can't, um, we can't dismiss the Holy Spirit's leading any more than we could dismiss counterfeits being produced of the devil and sidetracking the uh, brethren because this is the war that we're in and it's a spiritual war so it's very important to spend your time alone with the Lord in prayer and alone in the scriptures and meditating in his word and don't expect to go uh, sit in a pew like you're in a classroom and have somebody feed you the information like you do in a university because that's not how the Lord works the Lord works by following him in spirit and in truth. Let's not forget that. God bless. Have a good night.